on, Rangers! Come on, Rangers! Come on, Rangers! Come on, Rangers! There are 11 days left until the end of the season, and Dorking Wanderers are on the verge of staying up. Their trip to Gateshead has been rescheduled several times, and now they're finally making their way up north, and they know that a win will secure National League football for next season. So the 14-man squad is meeting up with the management team at Heathrow as they head on the longest journey of the season. If 14 players doesn't sound like very many, that's because it isn't. Dorking's owner manager Mark White has selected a very specific set of players for the task, one that is made a little more difficult by his suspension. For Mark is now beginning an eight-game stadium ban in the wake of the red card he received at York City. And so, there's extra pressure on his management team to help the players get the result the club so desperately craves. And it's not as if this is a dead rubber for Gateshead. A stunning run of form that's seen them win six games in a row has all but secured their own safety. And like Dorking, three points tonight will keep them up for another year. Unlike the previous touchline ban that led to Mark standing quietly at the back of the stands during the Altrincham match, this time he cannot be anywhere near the stadium nor be in contact with the likes of Beardy. So the Dorking gaffer is to drill his management and playing staff at the hotel before the short trek over to the Gateshead International Stadium. And for the game itself, Mark will be holed up in his hotel room, watching events on a laptop, where no referees can hear him scream. <laughs> two days is six minutes late. I've been out here two days. Two days, Mitch. You've been too busy in fucking nightclubs. Right, so you all know Mick, yeah? Lifelong friend of mine and football manager. So Mick's gonna step in tonight. Mick's got loads of experience, okay? Very good match reader in game in particular. And obviously we've got our top coaches here, to be fair, no disrespect to the others. But you've gotta take on board all this info. The rivals will not win tonight. So it's about understanding intricately that, um, we don't need to rush this game. So we've got to be very careful from the side that we don't come across like we're trying to win 4-0. We're not trying to win 4-0. We're trying to fucking be calm, relaxed, professional and fucking win 1-0. And, and if we get to if talk here 3-1 up and we're 2-1 down, then, the, then it changes. Do you know what I'm saying? All they need to know in them changing rooms is win this fucking game. Don't worry about league tables. Don't mention talk here. Don't mention fuck all. I'm telling you that so you know how to manage it from the side, right? You know when to rev and when not. But all they should think is win this fucking game at all costs. Right, boys, look, what I've asked you to do in the last, I don't know, two months, and you've done it brilliantly, not just the boys starting, but the boys on the bench. I remember Bobby at Dagenham didn't kick a ball and fucking contributed to the result more than barely fucking everybody, right? I've asked you to put everything you've got Everything you fucking got on the line. Jimmy, played a month so far. On the fucking line. Because you can't do anything about performances after the game or on the Monday. You can't, it, it, excuses don't fucking last in life, right? They're gone. The only time we can do anything about it, all 14 of you, is when we literally get down to the stadium and say, we are 100% leaving here with a fucking win. At all fucking costs. I don't want any of you, none of you, getting one instruction wrong, but best of all, losing a single battle at all. No excuses, no looking behind you, no talk. Win your fucking battles and make sure we win this game. We're only here to win this game. We're playing a back four, so... The boys on the side are on the side for one reason, because of the type of subs that we need. So Baz is on the side, we need wing backs, Cal and Cooley. There's absolutely no hurry whatsoever when this whistle goes, at all. They're a possession based team. I think they're third or fourth behind us, we're second. So you do want them to have the ball as little as possible for obvious reasons, yeah? Remember the message, deny these tens the ball, try and play in their half, okay? Food, coach at six, Lou. Gaffer is on a stadium ban um, for my advisory referee service that I provide free of charge um, <laughs> that, wasn't, wasn't, that <laughs> wasn't that welcome, mate. But of course, 
Um, so yeah, listen, it's, it is, there's no way of dressing it up, mate. It's really annoying. Um, but you know, it, 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 all great things in life have, have a weakness, don't they? And my passion and enthusiasm is what drives us. And every now and then it's, uh, it crosses over, especially when, you know, we're conducting the referee advisory service. We've got our big challenge today is that we couldn't travel. So Dino and Carl and Vernon couldn't take two days out of work. It's a midweek in Gates and it's two days off work. We've had players, Bowerman, and Pryor, Frank and Cook um, couldn't travel. Um, Ed Harris, Sammy Alab couldn't travel. Two days off work. I wasn't going to put my foot down. I'm pretty relaxed about where we are. We've done really well recently. Missing me or just be those intricacies of decision making, like when we go long, when we go short, when we calm down, when we speed up. Managers make, you know, so many meta decisions. Um, but listen, they're a great side. There's great leaders out there. Mickey Dan, Mark Beard, Tom Duke, Tony Prime, Louis Plumridge in the dugout, and Ant Sheldon, and Pocket Rocket, the main man behind the analysis, um, who's been amazing. He's in the dugout for the first time. Um, which I'm buzzing about, so it's a good opportunity for all these boys and I'll sit here and if they win, um, I'll tell them I'll buy them whatever they want when they get back. If Mark was to break the rules and attend the game, it wouldn't be hard to spot him in the crowd, unless... Well, I've got a stadium ban, and we're playing dates set away, Rich, and uh, there's absolutely no way that I'll go to the stadium at all, mate. Yeah? <laughs> with Mark locked in his hotel room from the outside so that he can't go through with any hair-brained disguise plans, the team head to Gateshead, where a handful of travelling supporters watch a famished Coach Beardy lead the warm-ups. Mitch, get me some food, I'm fucking starving. I'm fucking hungry as well. Get some much. Yeah, but I'm still starving. I'm I'm starving. Can I get some food? See if we get some. Go over to the road to Asda. No, yeah, get like so things that we can eat in our pocket, like chicken, chicken satay chicken. things. Chicken satay. Chicken satay. Chicken satay. Go get them. Go on. I'm hungry. I'm still hungry. Sigs, Nicky, Jimmy, anticipate everything off of Harry's flicks as well, yeah? Josh Morrow, fucking tight to him. Don't give him a second to breathe. Any knockdowns, you're fucking there. You're winning them. Seconds. Come on, lads. Fucking switched on now, yeah? Let's go. Come on. My expectations were that just to survive in the league, actually, just to just to sort of consolidate in the league in the national league. This season, um, especially after losing Kedwin Scott and Macaulay Langstaff to Notts County, like they were massive for us last season. There were sixty odd goals there, and we, we lost them. I think, to be honest, survival was like the number one priority. The say in the national league: if you start on a high, you end on a low. And we've done it the opposite way around. We've started on the low, and sort of come on the high we've got a lot of sort of low knees come in injuries have sorted themselves out it's just I think with the buzz with the crowd and things everybody's got behind the club it's just really rallied the lads and we've progressed no I think it's 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 been a pleasant surprise shall we say you know there's been some there's been some issues with players missing etc in you know in the preceding weeks but they've just sort of gelled at the right time you know um, the right players have came back at the right time there's a lot of talk about believing in the, um, what did I say, believing in the project. In the project, yeah, there's a lot of that going on. A lot of belief in the fans. A few extra fans coming down, now they're winning. We spoke the last time at Dorking about Sunderland, about Newcastle. People who come here are for Gateshead, and that's what it's all about, you know. And it, everybody knows the lads, the lads know who we are, like sometimes by name. You don't get that in the Premier League or the Championship, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, good. There's a mix of um, there's a mix of Newcastle fans, Gateshead fans. There's a mix of even Hartlepool, Middlesbrough, all over the North East. Yeah, all over the North East come here. I think that's probably the best way to put it as small and mighty. I mean, when you like I said before, when you're sandwiched in between two massive clubs in Newcastle and Sunderland, Gateshead's got a huge population of over like hundreds of thousands, but you, you just don't get the fan base at all. I mean. It, a four-figure crowd is, is probably about right uh, for Gateshead, but, you know, we're, there's been plenty of times where we've got under that this year, so I'd like to see us get around four four-figure crowds, but there are plenty of times where we don't. It sort of depends on away followings as well. If you've got the likes of Wrexham, they travel well, 
Notts County do and so, sort of Chesterfield, but yeah. Uh, Mitch, do you know the dimensions, what Vern does for the little quick feet shit? Oh no, I don't need to know, I just don't know if you know. I can work out myself, but I didn't know exactly. Love, it. love that, mate. Love it, boys. Good boys, boys, let's get some info on it now. Let's open your mouth. Good. Can we score? Can we score? Oh. Fucking hell, Jimmy. Yeah. I played, yeah, I played. I played this level in the what, mid 90s, because your old fella played, didn't he? Yeah. It's a fucking long way from the car, isn't it? The fans. Let's go, let's go. Come on, Bob. Fucking winners, boys. Winners, yeah. Come, come on, you. Come on. Come on. Let's have a good one, mate. Let's get tuned in. Come on, Ryan, lad. Let's get the fucking three points. Nice on, night and a fucking good come trip home tomorrow. Come on, come on. Come come on. on. Come on. One more's done. Dan, come on, lad. Yes. Yeah, come on, Nicky, son. Come on, Jimmy. You've been fucking brilliant. Keep this going. You lost that, Mori? Always. Superstition. Two more, two more. I need to come now. That's a good start for me. Well done. Yeah, yeah. Come on then, Josh. Come on, you. All the best, son. All the best, mate. What are you doing? Spandex. Just got keeper in uh... yeah, yeah, two. Yeah, they always last, don't they? Left back. Oh, I'm going. Fucking hell, he takes too long. All the best, mate. Have a good game, yeah? Yeah, thank you, man. They lined up as a back four. No, they, they didn't, though. They, they... They're not a back four, they ain't. <laughs> No. Why'd you change it, you mug? They set up as a three, didn't they? So did we. <laughs> yeah, so did we. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably because he's not wearing the glasses that bunch of amateurs bought him, Beardy is concerned that Gateshead are lining up with an unexpected four-man defence. Definitely a back four, boys. And usually at this point, Mark would call young scouting genius Ant to help figure this out. It might not be, actually. Yeah. But apparently, yeah. rather than give Beardy Ant's number, Mark instead puts Ant on the bench, which makes this process a lot easier. Let's know, Ant. Yeah, it's a free, it's a free. It's a free, yeah, yeah. It's a free. It's a free. And thus, yeah. Ant solves that mystery pretty quickly. Now, now, now! Now he's got to go. Yeah. Tight up! Good! Gates said to playing the kind of system that Dorking would ideally be employing in every match. A system designed to dominate the ball. And when the season started, that's exactly what Dorking would be trying to do here. But things have changed over the last four months, and a more mixed approach from the Wanderers is required to help get them over the season's finish line. Bobby's got to go in with him, hasn't he? Yeah, that's the one he said, and uh, Tony's ended up going, he don't want that. Although they are expected to play percentages far more than we're used to, Mark did warn his players to keep hold of the ball to thwart their opponent's game plan, something they struggled to do in the opening stages. Go on, get high! High! Jimmy, come on! Let's go! Oh, it's got to be better. Keep it! Keep it! Nicky, come back out! Josh, Josh! Talk to the back, keep in it! Don't just go too straight too early, come back out! Be patient! Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy! One thing, don't get in the box! Support the box. You're free, be free here, Moro, sit! Still, Wanderers do have a fair share of the ball early on, and with their wingers in fine form right now, crosses into the Hot Dog and the Seager Mega Drive might well give them the edge. There was no handball there, but the corner leads to a glorious chance nonetheless. On a side note, this is a one-man shoot, and while we don't want to rely on the stadium cam for the coverage, we do want you to be able to see what actually happened. And while we're on the subject of camera angles, over the last three seasons we've been proud to associate ourselves with your instant replay, the UK's number one non-league and grassroots broadcaster. What we're really saying is if you want or need your matches filmed, then your instant replay are absolutely the people to talk to. They'll shoot your match, they'll cut the highlights, they'll make social clips, they'll interview players, and crucially, it's all for a price that non-league clubs can afford. Check out the details in the description. Isaac, Isaac, tighter! Gateshead respond when Adam Campbell tees up Marcus Dynanga. Oh, it's time to earlier! 
As mentioned earlier, with Dino, Carl and Vern unable to make the trip north, Mark's surrogate for the day is scouser Mickey Daniels, a.k.a. Mickey Dan, the former Dorking captain who played for the club until he was 46 years old and later in his managerial career somehow got sent off for getting overexcited in his own team talk. Both Mick and Beardy are doing their best to figure out how to deal with the micro situations occurring on the pitch. Nicky's got to come in. Yeah, it's hard because that, I know he's gone so high, it's, we can't do that, so I think... Bobby's got to come in though, do Bobby's the job in the middle. He's got Nicky's to come in, in. otherwise we're one-on-one on one here. Yeah, yeah. Nicky's going to have to come in. Get him back! Get him back! Go on! Work. Work. Go on! Together! Go on! Down in Chesterfield, Torquay United are collapsing. They're three down in the first half, and it's a scoreline that instantly means both Dorking and Gateshead will survive if they share a point in this match. Not that you'd know it, given the way both teams are coming forwards. Oh, you... Fuck! Go on! Edge, Moro! Edge, Moro! Edge, Moro, Edge! He dropped it. Goalkeeper Philip Marshall's flapping hand nearly gets Gateshead into trouble, but Dorking can't quite make the most of the opening. When the ball is so disgusted by Josh Taylor's horrendous face when the midfielder goes to head it, it spins away from all Dorking players and gives Gateshead a chance to get in behind. Time! Fucking hell, 50 Josh. pence there, Josh. The shout, boys! Time! No crosses! No crosses! Just bring it down! Panay and Campbell are looking lively down the left and that sucks in Bobby Joe Taylor. Oh. He's unlucky, he's on him. Bob's foul leads to a free kick routine that our cameraman finds confusing. Dan Lincoln on the other hand is far harder to dupe. Set! Great save, Dan! Keep it! Keep it! Yeah! The boys! Long throw! Long throw! Long throw! Josh! Josh! With half time fast approaching, Dorking gets a throw high up the pitch, but the bench have noticed they're not locked up at the back. Um, One more! Bob's there, Bob's there. Bob's there. Bob! Bob! Need one more, yeah, Bob's Jimmy! Bob's Jimmy, Bob's Jimmy, get Bobby, we need one Bobby. more, Bobby. Josh, Bobby. Bobby. It's fucking two on fucking two! Bobby! Fucking oh, hell! Man. Is that Nicky again? He's been their best player. Get over to me! Get over to me! Jimmy! Sega! Fucking keep in, man! In the first half, peppered with half chances, Dynanga's header goes down as the best of the lot. Tight, man on the man on! Oh! Settle! Slow it down, come on! Dorking are undoubtedly playing the game slower than their opponents would like, especially as Gateshead are the only team in the National League to play a multi-ball system. When Josh Taylor takes too long to throw the ball in right before the half-time whistle, he gets a yellow. It's worth pointing out again that a goalless draw will give both teams exactly what they need to survive. Such a shit yo card. Such a shit yo card. Yeah, he's fucking Why is he fucking booking then? Josh! Isaac can have it! Before the second half gets going, Coach Dukes decides to talk to the Gateshead crew about their insistence on using the multi ball system. Have you, got, have you boys got like multi ball around here? You're just throwing it on? See all the game, the track. Everyone is losing below us. No, the the point, boys are shaking. Yeah, but listen, every, all the teams below us are losing. Yeah, yeah. A point when we're both fucking happy days and you go win at Wembley. <laughs> Just tell the, your the boys, boys to relax. Be so, be so tell them to relax. <laughs> you boys relax. And listen, everyone's happy and you win at Wembley, eh? <laughs> the multi ball is yeah. absolutely ludicrous. Because what's happened is they're chucking it on. They've got multi ball, look, one, two, oh, no. fucking. And then we don't, it gets chucked to them. We don't throw it within five seconds. You boys get the ump. In a normal game, that wouldn't be the case because they wouldn't have ball boys fucking thrown on him two seconds. I surprised no. Coach saying. Dukes really isn't going to let this go. So if that was us there, 
He's not having a word with him, is he? He would have been booked by now if that was us. 100%. Tell him. Please tell him. Dukes' multi-ball plight is one of the few eventful things happening in the second half, at least until Bobby Joe comes alive. The resulting corner gives serial shithouser Luke Moore a chance to wind up the home fans. Moore's insistence on placing the ball outside the quadrants and his don't give a fuck attitude is the antidote to the passive aggression of the ball boys and their insistence on spotting the ball as quickly as possible. Tell him not to take the piss in booking next what? time. What? Tell Moore not to take the piss because he'll book him. He'll, he'll book him and have two midfielders and book him. Don't get booked! I'll buy his two of you on yes! As the game drifts on, and despite Torquay getting tonked by Chesterfield, Gateshead continue to push for a goal, and Dorking look to soak up whatever the heed throw at them. Switch on, mate! Gateshead are getting closer. When Adam Campbell's deep cross reaches sub Greg Ollie, the jig looks like it's up for Dorking. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. What the fuck has he saved that? We can't explain how Dan Gallagher pulled off the greatest save since my mum opened a Midland bank account in my name and I got one of those little blue dictionaries, but something in his bones told him to lie down in exactly the right spot. Gateshead refused to settle on the solitary point and they keep on coming. Spread it down! Relax! No! Yeah, yeah, finally. Without Mark there to come up with the substitution plan, Mickey, Dan, Beardy and Jukesy are trying to come up with it themselves. Jukesy, the only other thing we could do is like put... Can't we just need to kick the ball a bit better, like Keely in there, and push more on instead of Seeks? Yeah, good call. Because I think Seeks is fucking... Good call. Yeah, He's not keeping it for us, even little anything. I just said to Jukesy, maybe Keely in there, and then just have Moro just a little bit. So Keely and Josh, and Moro a little bit more on instead of Seeks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Calm in possession, keep the ball for us, son, yeah? Yeah, yeah? Come on. Time is nearly up and Dorking come forward, looking to keep the ball away from their own goal as much as anything. Get it tight! Come on, runners! Runners! Get it across, come on, son! Come on, come on! Oh, 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 the bench claim a throw in knowing another few precious seconds can be wasted, much to the chagrin of the Gateshead fans, who are sick of Dorking slowing the game down, even though a points will keep both teams up. Come on. Gateshead are giving it everything they've got to get the goal that they, well, they, they just don't need. Stand up! Stand up! Come on, Barkin! Too deep! Too deep! Don't foul. Stay with your man! Come on, Markin! Have you cross! Chief deep! Cross! Stand up! Stand up! Runners! Runners! Oh, fucking runners! Don't switch off! Colders! Moro! Colders! Seconds! Seconds! Yes, Bazza! Line! Get the line together! Colders! In the corner! When Dan Lincoln's long kick leads to a Dorking throw in, it results in Luke Moore ignoring the ball boy, who then viciously tosses the ball into the face of Bobby Joe Taylor, who may or may not survive the attack. Ball boy's just thrown a fucking ball at his head! Are they alright? Oi, fucking tight, tight. Is he all right? Bazzy, you step in there. Yeah, Bazzy, you step in, Tony. Oh, that's a foul. Oh, that's a foul. Just pushing the fucking pitch. They're playing. Bazzy, are in. Right, that's it, come on. Come on, Harding. Back in. Come on. We've got 40, nearly 48. Minute 20. Settle, settle, settle. What's that? Get Harry, get across, go on, come on, come, come on, on Harry, let's fight! Minute to go! Come on, minute to go! On. On. Keep working! Runners! Runners! Stay with your Make the change. Stay next with the Is it next time it's out? Keep 
Keep it! Keep it! Ten seconds, sell him. That's yeah. it! Blow yeah. the fucking whistle! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> 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 What up, boys? It's fucking another year in this division. Love that, lad. Fucking the pilot. Why are they playing fucking multiple? I'd have been doing my fucking nuts. Well done, mate. Well done, mate. Brilliant. Well done, mate. That's a nervous pill. I've got loads of champagne in there. Yes, get some. Come on, Tommy. It was fucking horrible being locked in a hotel room. It really was. It ain't nice. Will I learn from it? No, I'm not going to fucking change. I want to make sure I provide a stringent referee advisory service at all times. But genuinely, it's all about the club, not me. I do my bit. I'm not, I'm not going to bother reining myself in because I'm the biggest fan at the club and I'm closely followed now by thousands of others. So I have to leave from the front. I'm the flag bearer. I'm passionate. I don't want us to be too professional. I don't want us to be too prim and proper. We are what we are in the fucking tin. Tonight, I've brought in, you know, Beardy and Juki, done a great job with Louis and Primey, and I brought in Mickey Dan, who once got sent off for his own half-time team talk. It was that bad. Right, and Mickey Dan's been on the side, rain out of his fucking head. Um, old school, ex Dawkins Wanderers captain Mickey Dan as well. Do you know what I mean? He's been there, done it for us, and that's the way the club rolls. We played how Dawkins played at the start of the season. We had probably an amazing start. You know, we were up near the playoffs for a long period of time. You know, we had a good start, but I think it's just, I think it's just a case of um, being part time. A lot of tired bodies, a lot of injuries happen, like anything does when we have quite a small squad. Um, and then it just come to a point where we were just making a lot of mistakes that were costing us because we're, the way we keep the ball, we were losing it in bad areas, and it was just. Punishing us, and I think it just it just got to a point where, <clears throat> obviously, not being full time and sort of part time fitness wise, a lot of teams were, you know, setting traps and basically making us make mistakes to then counter. And I think it just got to a point where we were saying, let's not lose in the wrong areas, let's play high up the pitch, and kind of it has worked. Uh, everyone's on the same page, fighting in the same direction, and uh, since I've come in, I've, I've enjoyed it. You know, uh, I've come in this club with uh, get a smile back on my face, get the enjoyment back. And uh, if I can pass my experience on to them, then brilliant, you know. But uh, it's a bunch of lads in there who uh, sort of um, you, you can guide, you know. They, they listen to me. Uh, I like to give advice, which I've always have done throughout my career. And uh, thankfully, they're boys who listen. It makes life easier having that experience and that age in the team. Um, but also the standards that he's got and the standards he's had over the years, he expects that from everyone else, regardless if we're... 18, 19, 25, part-time, whatever it is, he comes in with expectations and 
if we don't hit it, and a few of the younger lads have realised like they're going to get a bollock in. We've got a good core in there, you know, uh, sort of that little straight line, uh, talk and, and say their piece, and uh, everyone gets on with everyone. You know, I've been in dressing rooms where people don't get on with people and, and everything like that, but it seems that in there everyone's in, fighting in the same direction and uh, all want the best for each other. You know, that's, that's what I've uh, took from that group in now. Uh, even the ones who are not involved, they're coming in, they're celebrating as if they're played, uh, which I haven't seen a lot of throughout my career. Like, we are part time. Are we going to go to five days a week next year? I highly doubt it because that probably wouldn't fit with people's plans. But if it's one, two mornings, whatever it is, no one knows. I think the majority of the lads in there love being in Champions Company and they will try and make it work as much as possible. But it's life at the end of the day. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I think everyone's hoping that we can stick together and keep as many bodies in the building. We've been all over the country. We've won fans all over the country. Our fans from Dorking have gone all over. The, it's fucking unbelievable. It's dream ticket. This is a win for us. It's a great win. That's why we're drinking champagne, yeah. Here's to all the officials. Here's to all the officials that didn't have a great season. Yeah. And um, here's to um, all the people following the Wanderers. And I've got to say as well, all the clubs in the National League that make it a fucking great league. It's a great league, this one. I've never actually been in a division and thought, what a fucking great league. It's a great league. Great fans, great teams, great clubs, great owners. You know, so I'm over the moon, mate, but the credit goes to the volunteers, the committee, the supporters, the players. That's the bottom line, mate. All I am is the loud mouth that tries to steer the ship. Four days after staying up, Dorking went to Wildstone, where they shared the points in a 2-2 draw. And that leaves one game left to play as relegated Scunthorpe visit on the final day of the season. But in the Thursday night training before the match, many of the staff and players are already thinking about next season. And with Mark rumoured to be looking at daytime training, nobody quite knows what that means for their future Wanderers' careers. I haven't spoke to Mark as of yet. Uh, obviously, I want to stay here. Um, I want to still be involved. Um, it's a lot depending on when we're going to be training, etc. during the days, how many days we're going to be training, etc. For how long we're going to be training, etc. Um, yeah, so I, I presume I'll sit down with Mark and go from there. That's the next big step as a club. Uh, it's obviously looking towards full-time, um, being full-time. Um, I know it's probably a lot more money, we've got to look at that side of it. But then it's not just that, there's more to it because being full time, like as I say, when all the clubs I've been at, it's not just the case of the boys coming in training. We've got to provide food for them, lunch, a breakfast, lunch, and then we could do gym programs. I could do full time analysis with them. There's so much more you could do to make it more professional. Um, whereas at the moment, we, they go to work all day, come here, call to seven, train, and then obviously they need to get home. So the more contact time you have with the players, the better it is. So um, that's only going to improve us again. So that's, that's the next step, I think, the next big thing. And whether it happens this year, or it's a hybrid model this year and go the next year, um, we, we, we wait and see. Carl and, Carl and Dukes, they're both school teachers. So I, I don't know how that would work in regards to only working a couple of days. Um, Vern, I think, is in a similar situation to me where he's self-employed, I think he is. So he might be able to work around it slightly. Um, but yeah, as of yet, it's um, very much up in the air. Have you enjoyed the season overall? Because it has been stressful at times. Have you enjoyed yourself? Yeah, of course. I mean, I just love football. So um, I love being out with the boys. That's what I love more than anything. So um, playing in sessions, getting ready for games, um, going out there, watching them play. And the great thing about this league is you're playing in front of good crowds, good players, and um, it, it's been a good experience this season. So yeah, I've enjoyed it as always. I've left for little spells and I've been involved with the uh, um, reserve side and stuff, but yeah, altogether it's about 15 years. That's a big chunk of your life. That's that's like a third. It's more than a third of your life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's a long time. If if the worst were to happen and you did decide you couldn't stay, how would I guess firstly, how would you feel about that? I'd be I'd be absolutely gutted if I'm honest. You know, you don't you don't sort of join a club at, you know, Sussex County 3 
and then when you get the opportunity to go full time and you know or part time you know and do it as part of you know your day job who wouldn't want to do that at the end of the day it, it, it's like it'd be unbelievable boys just quickly joking aside while I've got you all together so um, I want to say massive thanks for this season um, I'm going to see you at my office on Saturday anyway um, I won't be down the ground and I'm not sure I'm going to chance it because I don't, I don't fancy fucking these extensions of these bands but um, we're going to do the pre-match bit in my office. You all know where it is. Um, I'll let you know the time. But I just wanted to say big thanks, really, because, um, you know, it's a fucking... It is um, a hard task. And whether you've had a good season or whether your season could have been better, whether you've been out on loan, whether you've played two games, whether you've been injured in and out, bit of bad luck, you know, whatever you've done this year is all... It's always part of the journey. It's always part of what's what. Not everybody can be a fucking hero every season. Every season throws up different winners um, and different people that get you to, through that situation. And we did have it really tough this year. I think all of you, you know, those of you that have not played have been patient or understanding, but you've trained hard. The boys that have played have given it everything and you've been at a disadvantage a lot of the season with the way we've done things, okay. We're going to go out for the season like in Wondrous style. We're going to do the old gunslinger team. We're going to literally go like literally nothing but players that run forward. We've got two and a half thousand home fans. So I want to make sure we just go. I'm happy to give. I know Tone won't like it and Dan, you know, and the defenders. But I'm happy to give away two goals. I want to score four or five and I want to fucking put on a show. So we're going to go gunslinging against this gun thought. OK, that's what we're going to do. Jukes will tell you the plan. He's looked at it all. It's the only way forward probably because we don't have the resources to say, right, great, no problem. All go and quit your jobs, lads, and, and we'll make up your salary. We just don't have the resources and I don't think many teams in this league do. Um, and I've canvassed a lot of other clubs and what they do and they will do two or three mornings. Maybe put a little bit more in the travel budget so they're not certain games getting up at six in the morning. But that's what they're doing. So it's the full-time professional league that you hear it is. I would argue it's more three-quarter time in the main. You've obviously got teams and clubs that are just in this bottleneck. Your Chesterfields, Knotts, Wrexham. You've got clubs in there that are absolutely full-time. But there's quite a few that are doing two to three mornings. So... I'm in the position as we speak of um, li liaising with all players who are in turn liaising with their employers and their families. And in the main, not doing evenings is extremely popular because it, in, in the modern world, like it's all about work-life balance, isn't it? So people with families, you know, they're like, wow, I'm gonna see my kids, <laughs> you know, twice a week. I don't see them all day Saturday. You, know, you forget these things. So, um, yeah, they're talking to employers. We'll have to, there might be a few little gaps to balance financially for some of them. I don't want them to be out of pocket where they've had to reduce down what's what. But week four June, Tuesday, scrambled egg on toast. You know, we, we're going to be a better version of ourselves. And it's one hell of a task for a club this size to create that, and I'm in the middle of doing it right now. It's the final day of the National League season, and Mark is once again banned, this time from being anywhere near his own stadium, which is why the final player meet is happening inside Mark's business offices, up the road from Meadowbank. With their National League status secured, the atmosphere amongst the Wanderers is upbeat and Mark's got his chairman hat on, for he wants to entertain the large crowd and get them coming back for next season. But before he imparts that message on the players, the former BMX prodigy, that's right, wants to display his balancing skills on the office scooter. That's not a euphemism, it's, it's literal. It's probably working now, put it on, let's have a spin. I, I ain't used it. I ain't used it. No. 
Look, who, who knows how to ride one of these? But how's it, how's it move forward? Huh? Is that it? It ain't fucking moving. No, you've got to push yourself off, can't we? Is it, mate? Fucking, let's go, mate. Let's go, mate. Let's go, boys. Fucking have some of this. That's it, mate. All right, chaps. No, mate. Oh, fucking hell. Have a go at that, Macca. Go on, Matt, you'll be good at that. You're only small. Do some tricks on it. You trip your Macca's still got a scooter to get to work. Go on, Macca! That's a lot. Oh, you don't even jump in it, Macca! That's good, he's still small, he's still got one. Him and his little boy go out together. Oh, that is fucking good. Right, boy, just go down here. Come on. Let's go. Come on, Jim. Oh, I want to make sure you lot play really fucking well. I want the mentality today to be like the playoff semi-final or the playoff final. Like, similar type of day, real focused warm-up, really, really geared up, you know, to put someone to bed, right? That is what I want it to be. Um, in terms of housekeeping, though, it is last game of the season. Um, so at the end of the game, though, you need to do like... Um, Dino and organise it with Baz. Baz is ca uh, playing today, captain. Um, don't go in the changing rooms. Get your kids if you've got any or whatever you want to do. And then go round the entire pitch. And just remember, just make the effort to go round every... You won't need to tell Harry Ottaway, mate. He'll be giving them fridge magnets, mate. He ain't fucking silly. <laughs> do you know what I mean, yeah? Right? But... I said all the shit the other night about how much I appreciate you guys. I really want to reiterate that for those that weren't there. I appreciate it. I appreciate Alfie who hasn't he's played three games. I really appreciate all the support he's given the team. And it's not about whether you play 50 games with me or one, Joe. It's not about anything at all except, you know, contributing in whichever way you do. And every year people contribute in different ways. So could not ask for more than from you lot this year. But Nate, no mistake. I'm going to struggle to be friendly if you don't turn this lot over, <laughs> right? If this lot beat you today, or if this lot get a result out of you today, then I expect them to have played the best they've played in four years. That's the levels you'll have to take them to. Don't mind if that happens. Let's let Isaac in. It's unbelievable you can get a fucking time wrong. If I find him £200 and gave it to you, who would accept that? You would? Yeah, Perfect. Yeah, yeah. I like, totally them. agree with that, 100%. <laughs> brutal, R brutal. Yeah. I say, got to be a knife, mate, and take his bird. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Just do it all. Take his bird, take his dough a lot. Yeah. Right, Isaac. <laughs> <sighs> Forward passing, high fucking tempo, always looking to fucking turn it on, aware there are going to be two and a half thousand fucking home fans. It's unbelievable for a game with nothing on it. Right, for us, yeah? So I'm looking for you lot to understand the script. Do you understand? The script is they want to come and see us, take someone apart, like we can. Okay, get yourselves down there. What time is it? Yeah, loads of time. See that, boys, I'll just stay here all day. looking to get into football and uh, I emailed Chris Lee and within a couple of hours he got back to me and said come down to West Humble uh, that was 27th September 2016 I've been hooked ever since oh, God, what haven't I learned um, it's a totally totally different league I know it's easy to say that real full-time clubs some of these clubs have been Premier League Championship all league clubs really and the way they set up and things like that, so many different things, mate. Um, a lot of stuff, I've learned a lot. I probably haven't, but. <laughs> Seeing top draw coaches coaching every week, you know, Waitonos County, Wrexham, coaches that have been and done it, 
looking at how they play their shapes and how they how uh, flexible they are, how fluid they are, and trying to work out their shapes as well. Today is special for lots of different reasons, but I guess for me personally, it's my last match as club photographer. The gaffer's not really spoke to us yet. You know, we're just trying to get through this season. Big game today. He wants to go out with a bang for all the amazing fans that are here. So, yeah, we'll just get through today and hopefully he'll be in chat with us next week about next year. If I speak to the gaffer, hopefully we can sort something out. Um, I'm open to anything really. Uh, everything always comes down to money at the end of the day. Um, so I'm open to anything. As soon as I have um, well played. As soon as, <laughs> as soon as I have a chat with the gaffer, we'll go from there. Um, I'd love to stay. I want to stay. Love this club. What happens in the future happens. But I'll never forget the time here. This is a really special club. He told me then, so we're going back seven seasons, he said to me then, Steve, we're going to be in uh, League Two. And I thought, whoa, you know, that, that's, that's <laughs> ambition. But my God, he's an ambitious guy. The club's very ambitious. Everyone with the club just keeps driving it on. Who knows where it'll stop. Just to be clear, that's definitely not Mark in the chicken outfit. Or is it? No, <laughs> it might be. Mark's hoping for a Globetrotter-style mauling of relegated Scunthorpe, and it certainly seems as though the Wanderers have got the message. James McShane is the first to test Scunthorpe goalkeeper Owen Foster, and Seb Bowman is the next to force him into a save. Dion Sembi Ferris combines with Daniel Elliott for Scunthorpe's first and, let's be honest, only attack of the first half, for this is not a game packed with action. Right side, it does have Barry Fuller's incredible long throw. That's the worst long throw in the world. Fucking geezer with one arm can throw longer. Perhaps Barry's playing the long game. Let's see how this one works out. Also, and this is a bit confusing, Aaron Cool has a blocked nose or something and he badly wants a tissue. Go to, to, to Bobby. Go to the way quick. Well done, make it. Tissue, tissue. He can't breathe. What's the tissue going to do? Cutie, just stay there. Suck it in. Left foot. Yeah! Get in there. Get in there, Sam. What's the goal? Is that, that Seagull? Yeah, of course. Seagull Mega Drive turns the ball into the corner with a neat first time finish. But of more pressing concern is Cool's inability to breathe. What do you can't breathe? What's that going to do? Hold the cards. Let's not rock it. Okay, what, don't, 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 ah, don't swing it, Tom. That won't work. Honestly, I've tried everything. Huh? Cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> Oi, just get your breathers, though. When you don't have to run about, just get your breather. Seeger is clearly in the mood, and when Jimmy gets the ball to his feet again, the striker looks to make it too. Oh, he's oh. slag. Great time. The only other real moment of note in the first half is when Dan Gallagher has an awkward fall. Fuck me! I thought he'd done his Gregory. Nice, set up. Dr. Beard's diagnosis of a broken Gregory Peck was fortunately incorrect, and the Wanderers go into the second half with Dan still on the pitch. Wanderers are playing the kind of possession football that we're used to, and the poor Scunthorpe players just want it to end. Not that we wish to spoil the ending here, but Jimmy Mewitt's wing wizardry sets up Ryan Seeger, whose fleetness of foot allows him to score the very last goal of the season. And the crowd lap it up, knowing what an achievement it has been to be able to enjoy the final moments to this extent. Love it, boys! While there are no more goals, there is time for Matt Briggs to return from his latest injury and remind the crowd that he still got it. He's like a new signing. Sorry, Briggo. Lincoln's not had a shot to save until now. What a save! 
and Samuel Abd is hoping to get on for his 100th and final appearance for Dorking Wanderers. As long as it stays 2-0, he'll definitely get on and we're keen that he does because he's agreed to wear a microphone. That goal seemed to mean the end for Sammy, but the coaches trust the man, and you're about to hear why. I don't know. Back us in. Dan! Hold here. 451. What are you talking about? 451. Uh, no, that's right side. That's right side. Yeah. Congrats, my brother. Cheers, mate. Congrats. Yeah, back four, back four. Yeah, yeah. Tone, left side. Dan, screen. Dan, screen. Tone, work with me. Let Bob do that. Tone, stay here. Cooling seconds. Land on it. Land on it. Tone, come across, Tone! Tone, work with me! Oh, yeah, stay, Baz, stay! Baz, narrow! Go ball, go ball! On his touch! Help him, help him, Brigo, help him, Brigo! Tackle! Foot in! Up! Time! Lino! Yeah, Baz, you're in front. Anything for you, Baz, is you. It's coming. Thanks, mate. A little bit longer than nice, I know, but... Oh, I'm dead. That's how I like it. The win left Dorking five places and nine points clear of the relegation zone with all games played. In a season where the target was survival, a goal that looked bleakly unrealistic as recently as the York game, Dorking Wanderers' first season in the National League has, ultimately, been a huge success. But what comes next for many of the players and staff remains unclear as the former pub team begins its transition into the world of professional football. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's awkward, uh, put it that way. But like I said, it's something I want to do. Um, something that the gaffer mentioned when I signed six, seven years ago. And yeah, I can make it happen. I'd love to make it happen. I've, I've been at the club for such, such a long time, and it's part of me. It's part of my family. So something I want to I want to stay at the club. So it's something I could make work. I may be able to do. I need to speak to work. Uh, I may be able to do one day, I can't see that I'll be able to do so. I've just started a fairly new job and it's a bit of a career. I've not got that long left at work. I'm old, as you can obviously tell. Um, so I don't know if I can commit to two days a week, unfortunately. Up and down, a lot to be learned, a big learning curve. I think uh, the last eight games, I think nine games, as we first to the Kaffir, he called it, he said we're going to go on a nine game unbeaten streak. I think we lost one. We drew two or three and we won the rest. Um, but that can potentially cover over, paint over cracks. We're definitely in a relegation battle uh, for two, three months. But we ended up finishing mid-table. It was good uh, up till Christmas. Um, sport we started with the season well, personally and as a team, as a squad. And then sort of, it's a tough league. We hit, hit a brick wall after Christmas and it was, it was tough, tough games. Go again Saturday, Tuesday and it takes it out of you. But well, we've done what we set out to do and stay in the league and consolidate. So. It's a plus in my eyes. When you enter this division and you know, you're not going for playoffs or you're not getting promoted or you're not in a trophy or whatever it is, you kind of feel like you haven't been successful, but you really got to look at a bigger picture. And I think you know, the fact that we've managed to stay in the division being part-time, probably one of the only part-time clubs in this division, I think it's a big achievement in itself. And you know, credit to the lads, credit to everybody involved. You know, it's, been a, it's been a bit of a slog the last six six weeks or so. My plan's always been to play as long as possible. I think I've got to say today, a bit of motivation to play a little bit longer, a little bit longer just so my kids can see me play. Uh, one of them's at the age where he may start remembering soon. So, um, But then it's a case of moving into coaching and management for myself. Um, always, from a young age, I've always wanted to go into coaching, done my badges. Um, it's just where and when, picking the right club. 
Um, does it work for me? Does it work with the family? But I think Ed might be slightly different because you've got your jobs. Yeah, I'm different. I'm very different. I made a decision probably at the age of like 22, 23 that I'd concentrate on, or not concentrate, that's probably the wrong wording, but I was always going to stay part time and I'd start to build a career outside of football. And now I guess it's like the playing fields have started to, to change, so my career's. I don't want to say it's more important, and that's the exact conversation I had with a gaffer. Was I'm an all or nothing person. Like I've been able to balance everything perfectly well. Like I can give 100% to football, can give 100% to to work. Where it's coming to that stage now, where I've got to the stage where I feel like work is probably more exhausting, and not exhausting, but it takes up more time. And then I've got to try and play and give 100% on a, on a Saturday. And then the fact that I've got also factor in my family and a little girl and my missus, it makes it harder. So it's more to do with just balancing, to be fair. And it's come to the stage where I, I probably can't. I want to, but I can't balance both. But you know, I've enjoyed the ride. I've been here seven years. Been quite successful here. I was successful before I came here. Um, but this year was the that ticked off. I've now coached in every level of non-league football from seven up to one. So that's that's tick the ticks a box for me. Well, personally for me, it's, it's no different for me. So <clears throat> I work with Baz. I do coaching. So nights or or mornings for me doesn't doesn't matter. In in in, in all honesty, I would probably prefer to do mornings. But you know, for some others, it might be a bit difficult. I don't. I'm not too sure on the situation. We don't talk about it. But hopefully. Um, you know, if it does, it's something that we can all do. All right, Ed, what's your emotional experience today? Sad. That's it, really. Nearly cried when I walked out the door today, when I came to football, but... In life, you have to, like, sometimes weigh up certain options and something has to give. Like, especially as you get older, in non-league football, people don't see that side of it, right? Like, you've got work, you've got family, and you've got the thing that you probably enjoy most my missus will hate me for saying that in terms of like coming to football and it's not it's not necessarily like the playing side it's what you get in terms of the changing room the boys being part of something and to be fair i think you agree right like here you are actually part of something like you're part of a community so yeah like walking through the door today or walking out the door to come here i was really upset like i was sad like at the end of the game i was sad because i knew more than likely i haven't closed the door 100 percent. i want to make that clear like but more than likely it potentially is my last game so 17 years of football is kind of like shit like it's done and it, it happens so quick like blink of an eye isn't it? i remember us at hayes and yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, i remember us going to luton mansfield wrexham and then suddenly i'm like oh, it's done it's done so it's, it's tough but at the same time, the club doesn't stand still, and I think that's that's the beautiful thing about being part of this football club. Not every football club's like it. That you can, you're part of something that's going to kick on, and hopefully, like me and Sammy will come back in a couple of years. Sammy might be in next year. I don't know what his plans are, but they could be in the football league. Like that would be a dream. Like I come and watch them play against a League Two club. Watching them against AFC Wimbledon, the first proper club that I was at, would be. I'm real, so. Everything we do has always got so much uncertainty around it and so much risk that you never actually get a chance to go, oh, that's good, brilliant. If we buy our stadium, so many people want to invest in this club and be part of this journey. They want to jump on now and go, mate, this club could genuinely get to League One with a small push. I think if we buy the stadium and someone throws the keys at us, it will be that, I do believe it'll be that point where, a bit like a young couple walking into their first home, they cut the ribbon and go, didn't we do well, babe? But little secret is this, yeah. I want to get to the FA Cup first. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! Mate, mate, honestly, I don't know whether, right, I've got to pay off the people that do the draw, right, to get the lowest possible you know, get him to cuff the number. Old school, like an old school raffle. Get a little ticket, he puts it in there, he cuffs it, right? He knows this here is a step 19 team that's got lucky in the last round. They're a four by, they're never gonna win a fucking game. And so what happens, and they go, 
Dorking Wanderers, and he goes, oh, fucking, here we go. He does the old cuff it. In it goes. There we go. We'll play. No fucking chance of beating them. Right? The whole fucking world, and there aren't he, want us to win one fucking game in the FA Cup next year, Rich. I want to get to the third round proper. I want to fucking play Man United, Liverpool. I want... I just feel like there's something out there for us like that that is the next level of exposure for this great club. Do you know what I mean? I want to deliver that. We will. We'll email the FA. So we'll and cuff the draw, yeah, and see if we can get to the next round. <laughs> you ending it on that? Yeah. Listen, listen, Bob, let me, I'm fucking chief motivator, Bobby. My role, I'm fucking head of the motivation department. If they ain't fucking booking him, why'd he stop the fucking game? I was waiting in the undertow Set adrift with fed away like bones oh! I'm aware of my What are you watching? Oh, fucking hell! He's off, he's off, Turks. They're your wives, not mine! Sit into a tumble. Waves the ship me out. Oh my days! Never been so easy. Yeah! Losing my direction. Bearings have me south of home I've been wrong before I was Yes! 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 That's some of them apples! How do you like them apples? On the way I've never had to manage it with the fans before. My thing with fans has always been, if you don't like it, fuck off. Yeah! Hey, worry about your fucking game, you knob! Lob ahead! Yeah! Oh my fucking God, mate. You alright, Nicky? You got everything you need? Mitchell, see you. Absolutely terrible! How'd I wind up so far from? It's 
why people hate fucking kids. Yeah, this is why, honestly, I fucking hate kids. to go into fucking brutal mode and um, but but the goal was to consolidate and, and that's what we've done at all costs and it was at all costs thank you for watching bunch of amateurs this season we really appreciate all of the support the likes the subscriptions and whatever else you can support us and make sure that we make more of these by joining us on youtube memberships or patreon and that's all there is to say now, apart from Dorkin Uncovered will return. <laughs>